So the evidence from the American Plywood Cooperatives, the Israeli Kibbutzim, uh, and the Mondragon Cooperatives supports the theoretical argument of Block 3. Cooperatives do need external finance to be viable in the long term. Broadly speaking, capitalist firms get their external finance from two sources, debt and equity. The deal with debt is that the lenders get a fixed rate of return, but no right to influence the firm's decisions. That's what economists call control rights. Also in the case of debt, risk is borne entirely by the firm. If an investment project goes wrong, for example, debt holders still have to be paid. And if the firm goes bankrupt, then the debt holders are ahead of shareholders in the queue for payment. The deal for equity, or shareholders, is different. Dividends are decided by the firm and risk is borne by shareholders. If an investment project goes wrong, they will get little or no dividend and the share price will probably fall. In the event of bankruptcy, shareholders are at the back of the queue. So in return for bearing risk, shareholders get some power to influence the firm's decisions via their voting rights. And shareholders can limit their overall risk by holding a diversified portfolio.